in this chapter we're going to start exploring the power of the text prompts and essentially understand how changing the words that we use in our prompts can have an impact on the overall image output that the algorithm creates for us the next thing we'll do is cover the basics of the prompt in terms of what are the different options available for us to play with to understand how the output varies based on different text options provided. So I have come up with a list of options that we can play with in a more general comprehensive way for the mid journey algorithm and which the algorithm understands pretty well. In this chapter, in the upcoming modules, we're going to do a module on each one of these sections and understand how lightning, colors, using different artists, describing a location, changing the composition, assigning a different medium, using different styles by just improvising on the different text variations of styles that are available and lastly cover how to influence the image by signing a camera or a camera angle to it. Now let's deep dive into prompting again and start working with prompts. So let's say working with our same dog example I want to create an image of a dog. So all I have to do is type slash imagine and dog and the algo will create the image. Now to understand the power of text, what I'm going to do next is assign a few variables or adjectives before the dog. So let's say I want to see an angry dog versus I want to see a cute dog versus I want to see a Disney dog. Now, I expect you have reached the maximum allowed number of concurrent jobs. Don't worry, we have queued it. So if you send multiple jobs at the same time, it's going to queue your job till the previous ones have been processed. So this is the first one, just the prompt of a doc. So as expected, the algo created a realistic version of the dog image. In the next one, I assigned it an angry dog. And we can clearly see that Algo interpreted it correctly and in each photo either it went with the choice of a more aggressive angrier dog like the bulldog which we see in U1 and U2 or it just created a more angryish image by, by showing the relevant face expressions and teeth of the dog. The next one I sent in was the cute dog. Now here you see the image has completely changed just because of one adjective attached to the dog and it created a very cutish picture of small puppies and dogs. And lastly, when I gave it the Disney dog, it added a Disney touch and you can clearly see it from the eyes, especially from the U3. It looks like a character from a Disney movie. So in this section, I just wanted to show you how powerful a simple text prompt could be and just by the use of right adjectives we can create amazing stunning art that suits the purpose that we're using the algorithm for in this module we're going to start exploring how to assign different aesthetics to the output image generated by using different versions of text prompts by assigning a specific style to it. So forget the mid journey AI algo for a second. And if we just think about styling from a photographer's perspective, in context of photo generation, style refers to the ability to apply a specific aesthetic or a visual team to the generated art. Now what that means is in different genres and in different passages of time we see that the image that we create has been very different an image that was created in the 1800s in the victorian era would have a very different theme or style attached to it versus an image that has a futuristic theme 
Now we can use these keywords to influence the image that we're creating using the mid journey as well. To give you an example, I have listed down a few examples of style that can be used as a text prompt. For instance, if I want to create a very realistic image, I can call it a realism or a photorealistic. And in this way, what the algo will do is aim to create an image that is indistinguishable from a photograph. That is meaning it will make it very realistic by simulating a similar light, texture and depth of field. Similarly, if I want to show something that is out in the space, far in the galaxies, I can create it by using the style of cosmic. Adding the word cosmic will make it a space theme style. Similarly, if I want to show a pop art, which is a bold color style inspired by the pop art movement of the 1960s. In this way, what the algo will do is it will create an image that resembles the culture of the pop from the 1960s. Now let's go on to the tool and try a few of these combinations and see how it influences the image firsthand by experience. Now let's start with a very basic prompt of woman on top of a mountain. This will act as a base prompt and then we can build further on top of it. Now what if I add 1800s woman on top of a mountain or futuristic woman on top of the mountain or photorealistic woman on top of the mountain now for all these three i expect the image and especially the character of the woman to be specifically changed based on the type of the adjective or the style in this case that i'm assigning to the woman now our images have loaded and let's see how they are different in each case. So this is the first one in which I didn't assign any specific style to the image. And as you can see, the algorithm created a couple of different versions where a woman is standing on top of the mountain as expected. As I move on and I look at the 1800s woman, now you can see that the overall composition and aesthetic and especially the dress up of the woman is highly influenced by the style of the 1800s. And this is exactly what we were looking for. In the next one, we defined a futuristic woman. And now you can see not just the woman, but the mountainous terrain as well also looks like it has been taken from a futuristic era. And this is a lot of detail has been added here. Look at the helmet and the dressing, especially in this one. It looks like a very futuristic costume that the woman is wearing, just like a superhero almost. The next one we did was photorealistic. And now here we see a mix of different things. It tried creating a realistic version of photos in one and four, while in two and three, it took a complete different interpretation of it. And here she's standing more like a snow or cloud, or here the mountain is slightly detached from the surface and you can see a huge moon in the background. So this is how the AI works. You play along, you use different ones, and you see what kind of outcomes you come up with. And then based on that, you can further work on it. So let's say in this case, for instance, I like the fourth one and I want to see more variations of it. So I can click V4 and it will show me more versions because now I'm telling the algo, okay, out of the four images you created, the fourth one is the one I was looking for. So give me a couple of more versions of the same image. The image has loaded and as you can see, it created a couple of different versions of the image, which are very similar to the initial image from the grid that we picked up. And it looks like a realistic image of a mountain with the woman standing next to it. Of course, there are a lot of different things that we can do to further add description and details and to make this image a lot more realistic. And as we go along the course, we're going to learn more and more of these techniques. 
I highly suggest you at this point that you go back to mid journey, open up the platform and try a few of these with different objects and scenes in mind so that you get to have first hands on experience on how to use the tool. And that would be the best way for you to learn. In this module, we're going to start talking about lighting and how it can be used as a powerful feature in our text prompt to have a significant influence on the output generated. Before we dive into the model and get some hands-on experience, experience, let's understand what lighting actually means from the eyes of a photographer. Essentially, lighting is used by photographers to be able to effectively illuminate and bring out the features of an image or specifically an object inside the image. For instance, we have all seen cinematic shots in the movies, which use a different colorful, playful way of using the lightning to create an image that has a significant influences on how we process and view the image. In the same way, we have seen older movies from a few decades ago, which were just black and white light. You also know that we assign a blue lighting tone to the nighttime, whereas we can use spotlight to focus attention on a specific object. Glowing lights is another way to make the object look more glowy. Now let's talk about mid journey specifically and see how lighting impacts our generated images. In the context of mid journey, lighting is intended to evoke a specific mood or an atmosphere by providing instructions to the algo on what type of lightning to use. To start with the very basics, let's understand the difference between warm and cool light. So just like before, let's start with a basic prompt that will serve as our benchmark. This time, let's go with a castle by the lake. Now I'm going to ask the algorithm to produce the same age again, but this time I'm going to add a variable for warm lighting. And then the same variable again, but this time I'm going to add a variable for cool lighting. Now while the image is lowered, we know that warm lighting is typically associated with creating a cozy and inviting atmosphere. Whereas cool lighting is more associated with the energetic and a professional atmosphere. So let's see if we see this difference between the images that is created. I would expect a more yellowish orangish theme on the warm one, whereas the cold one will be more eye pleasing in terms of creating a light bluish background. So the first image was the simple basic image of the castle by the lake. An extraordinary creative image created by the algorithm nonetheless. The second one here is the warm lighting and as you see as expected it added a yellowish orangish touch of warmness to the image. And lastly the cool lighting where it shows more of a sunset sort of a lightish blue environment which is exactly what we expected in the case of cool lighting. The next thing I want to do is explore some of these options that I've provided you on this slide so that we can further experience the impact of lighting on our outputted image. So let's start the first one with moonlighting. So slash imagine, let's copy the same prompt, a castle by the lake. And this time, let's say I want moonlighting. Now, what I expect in this case is to create an atmosphere which is similar to the cool lighting, but because I specifically mentioned the moon, the algo might add moon in the background, or it would just be the moonlight, 
but it will have a significant impact on the image compared to the ones that we have previously generated. While this image is loading, I want to move on to the next one. And this time, I want to use natural light to keep it simple and show you how sometimes simplicity could be the key. By adding natural light on the image, I can just go and create a realistic and authentic look by simulating the impact of the natural light of the sun. And it could be an early morning, noon or sunset. And I expect to, it to be similar to the initial image that we started with. Now the moonlighting one is complete and as you can see that the algo created a romantic mysterious atmosphere by illuminating the subject which in our case is the castle by creating a cool light around it. And of course it interpreted the moon as an object and added the moon in each one. Now natural castle is also ready and as you can see it shows a sunrise or a sunset sort of an environment with a lot of natural light on it. The next one I want to try is volumetric lighting. And what volumetric lighting essentially is, is, let me write this down quickly first, volumetric lighting. Is, so volumetric lighting is the use of, is a specific computer graphics technique, which is used to stimulate the way light scatters in the real world environment. So what I expect here is a gaming mode sort of a sense of an image. My castle should look like something that I've picked up from a video game. Another way we can explore this prompt further is by using long exposure lighting. And what long exposure lighting for those of you that don't know means is a photography technique where the camera's shutter is opened for a prolonged period to capture both a stationary object as well as the movement of the light in the scene over time. What this does is it creates a unique effect of light trails. So this is our volumetric lighting and as I described you see a sort of a gaming environment look from here. It looks like it's coming from a cartoon or a Prince of Persia game, especially U2, U12 uh, and that's exactly what I expected in this case. The exposure lighting is also ready and as you can see the impact of the long exposure of the camera shutter, it's very evident in U2 and U4 where you see the light trail passing by while the image shot has been taken. Now one more thing we can do with lighting is that could come in handy is we can use it for focusing the attention on a specific object. So let's say with the same prompt I want to use a spotlight. So as the word suggests spotlight is used mostly to signify or get the focus of the audience on a specific object. So what I expect from my end is the algorithm will focus a spotlight on the castle itself. Another way lighting is used mostly in the theaters is backlit. In this case what I expect is that the light would be thrown from the back of the castle illuminating it from the back side which would create a very different image versus what we have seen so far. So you see, it did not really comprehend the idea of spotlight in this one, but we can definitely play around with it and make it better. Let's try something slightly different. For the spotlight, let's say a castle in spotlight by the lake. Now I expect the algorithm might be able to understand what I'm trying to refer to now 
and focus the spotlight on the cartel itself. Okay. In the meantime, our backlight is ready. And in the backlight one, you can see this is exactly what I was aiming for. It's pretty evident in U1, U2, and U3 that the light is shown from the back side of the castle. You see the sun is on the back in all these photos, and this is what backlighting essentially does. So this is our spotlight. What the algorithm is doing in this case is it's highlighting the castle but by making it more glowy instead of focusing the light as a separate object which is falling on the castle it's putting everything else in the image as in a darker shade versus the castle so you see especially in u3 the castle is illuminated and it's glowing but there is no light across and that is how the algorithm interpreted spotlight in this case now as you play around with different objects in different scenarios the way the algorithm interprets different lighting will change in this sense it focused the light on the castle while making everything else a bit dark and dull so in this section we were able to explore the use of lighting options and how it can be used to guide and control the output of the image we want to generate. This fundamental keyword will allow you for a high degree of customization and flexibility in creating images that align with your desired mood or atmosphere like you're aiming for. The next keyword we will focus on is the camera and the camera angle used to generate the image. Once again, keeping mid journey aside, let's first understand what this means from the perspective of a photographer. In the context of photo generation, the camera options can be used to simulate the effects of different types of cameras and lenses in the final output image. I've highlighted a list of 20 examples below of how different camera angles can be used to capture different sort of images using the mid-journey algorithm. Let's cover a few of them from the slides and then we'll move on to Discord and try a few camera angles and see how the image output is different for each one. So the first one here on the list is Panorama. Panorama is a style that will try and capture a 360 view of the image of the scene. It's similar to the option we see in our phones where the phone makes us move the camera, rotate it in a specific direction to capture the entire 360 view. It's a wide and expansive view that creates a sense of immersion and grandeur. On the other hand, if I type in DSLR into my prompt, it will try and replicate the realistic look of an image taken from a DSLR camera, which has a sharp focus and a shallow depth of field. Furthermore, I can use magnification, a style that will simulate the look from a magnifying glass and create the texture and the detail of the image accordingly. If I want to view something that can be seen from the top, then I can take on the bird's eye view. Bird's eye view will capture the scene from a high angle perspective. On the other hand, if I want to see something from a low angle, I can use worm's eye view, like a worm looking at things from a low angle perspective from below. A fish eye view will be similar to panorama, where it will give a wide angle lens, but at the same time it will create a distorted and exaggerated perspective with curved and distorted view of the subject. Moving on, if you want to create something that is closer to a 3D map of the scene, then LiDAR technology can help us achieve that through mid-journey. If we want to create thermal imaging image, then we can use the thermal option. And this will help capture the heat signature of the scene with a focus on temperature and contrast. So in this way, 
we can use different cameras and camera angle options that we have seen used in different technologies in the mid journey algorithm to understand the output and further use it to enhance our image and get more out of the mid journey algorithm now let's try a few of the examples that i mentioned earlier and see how the images change based on the camera angle provided so to start with a base prompt i'm going to just type in toronto which is the city i'm based in and then i'm going to type in the same prompt but this time from a panoramic view and then the same prompt but from a dslr view and let's see how the algo interprets the three different results the images have loaded and now let's start doing them one by one so the first one we did was Toronto so in Toronto you can see it created different versions and compositions of Toronto some in cartoonish style like in U3 and some of them looks very realistic it's like we U4 and you see it captured the Toronto pretty well because I can see CN Tower in most of these photos the next one we did was panorama and as expected panorama option simulated the wide angle view of a panoramic camera which captured a wide field of the entire Toronto city as seen from a panoramic view the next one we did was DSLR and here you can see two different things are happening in U1 and U3 the algo interpreted it as if I want to see the camera in the photo itself and it added the DSLR from two different point of views. Once in U3, I'm looking into the camera, while in U1, the camera is part of the image itself. U2 is more of what I was looking for in terms of it took the photo from a DSLR. And that's exactly what is portrayed here, a realistic focused photo of a DSLR camera. In fourth, what I believe it's trying to do is using a DSLR to take the photo in which it is specifically focused on the CN Tower and everything else is slightly out of focus. Very close to what we were expecting in this case. Now let's try a few more. So let's say I go with Imagine Prompt Toronto Microscopy View. Or if I say Toronto miniature view there's an eye missing here okay so from microscopy view I expect the algo to simulate the high resolution and details of a microscope Toronto should be visible as a very small high resolution image like we're viewing it from a microscope now on the other hand, in the miniature faking camera option, what we're trying to do is using it to create a small scale model of a large object. That's essentially what it means. So let's see how the algo interprets these two very different camera angles. The next two prompts are ready. I had to slightly tweak it. To get the desired output, I went with microscopy view of Toronto instead of typing Toronto microscopy because it was focusing more on the microscope than the lens of the camera itself. And as you can see, it did a couple of different things here. In U1, it added the microscope into the image of Toronto from far away. In the second one, it's showing a 3D model of Toronto inside a microscope. Third one is the one I'm actually looking for in which or closest to the one that I was looking for where it shows a microscope and the Toronto, Toronto's view from a microscope. And the fourth one is more of a futuristic view of how the Toronto lighting would look like from a microscope. Now, the next one we tried was miniature, which basically means create a 3D model of the image and that's exactly what we see here it looks like 
a small scale 3D model of Toronto has been created by using the specific keyword in our text prompt. Now let's try one more for this module to cover different camera angles. I would go with motion capture of Toronto. And let's see how the algorithm interprets this one. Basically, it should show me a dynamic view of how the city looks like in motion. So I would expect a trail of lights and a moving object in the image. Um, let's see exactly what we what the algo comes up with. This one was loaded pretty fast. Okay, as expected, we see motion in this image in different ways. In U1 and U4, we see the trail of lights following the man. In U3, it created a complete different motion around the buildings. And U4 looks like the man is running on the road with Toronto in the front with light trails on the sides. So this way, we were able to use different camera angles to achieve what we were doing. So just to recap, these different camera app options can be used to provide a high level of customization and flexibility in our image generation process, enabling us to create unique and creative images that align with the desired look and feel you're looking for. Once again, I would highly encourage you to pause the course right now, look at the slides, see the different camera angle options that I have put down there and try them out on different objects in different scenarios. It could be a human, it could be a city, it could be a natural and scenic environment. But unless you start practicing these options, it would become very difficult for you to move along and learn in the course. So go out there and get some hands-on experience. In this module, we will further investigate and understand the use of different camera angles that can be used for our mid-journey text prompt creation. In its simplest form, a camera angle refers to the position of the camera in relation to the subject being photographed. To give you a few basic examples, eye-level camera would be a camera angle that captures the scene from the perspective of a person's eye level. A high angle camera would mean I'm using a higher angle than the object itself to capture the image. A low angle on the other hand would mean that it captures the scene from below with a focus on the subject's height and position in the environment. A rear view camera on the other hand will capture the scene from behind the subject with a focus on subject's posture and body language. A front view camera will capture the scene from the front of the subject. A close-up camera would be beneficial when we want to take the photo from a subject's of the subject's face or body in close proximity so that it focuses on detail and structure. On the other hand, if we want to view the full image of our subject, then we can use full body camera angle. If we want to take a more diagonal or slanted camera angle, then we can go with oblique. Now, let's go back to our Discord and try and figure out how these camera angles will change the output of the image that is created using the same text prompt. So to start with, let's pick a very simple basic prompt. Let's say this time I'm going to go with Cinderella. And then I'm going to view the same Cinderella from a high angle shot and then from a low angle shot. High angle camera shot. And then from a low angle camera shot. From front view. and from rear view.
furthermore, I also want to see the same Cinderella in a full body angle shot. So I'm just going to write here full body camera shot. And then lastly, I want to see a very close up image of Cinderella. So I'm going to type here Cinderella close up camera shot or even more I can type extreme close up camera shot in which case I'm guessing it would focus on specific characters on the image. Let's see what the algo creates for us. So our images have loaded and let's start exploring them one by one. So the first one was a simple Cinderella and as you can see it created a very basic image of Cinderella in most of the images. Here is just the shoe and the dress but in the other three looks close to what we were expecting especially U2 is what I was looking for. The second one is Cinderella from a high angle camera shot and as you can see the algo was able to understand what we're looking for and it created an image of Cinderella from a high angle camera shot where we are seeing the subject that is Cinderella in this case from a high angle. One thing I want to know, tell you on a side note is Mid Journey's algorithm is not great with hands and legs. You see it added an extra leg or a hand here. Keep that in mind when you're working with own images. You see the fingers are also not five in most cases. That's what I've experienced. But just a side note for you to keep in mind. The next one we did was low angle camera shot. And now it focused on different things. I didn't exactly get what I wanted. So let's see what happens if I do just this much of the prompt slash imagine low angle image of Cinderella. Let's do photo and see if the algo interprets this better than the previous one. In the meantime, let's keep exploring the other ones. So now we said front view and see in two out of the four images, we got what we wanted. It's showing a shot of Cinderella from a front view. In the other two, it's showing the camera because it focused on the camera shot as an object by itself. Similar thing here, this is showing Cinderella from a camera shot, from a rear view in two of them, but it's shown within a camera, not exactly what you were looking for, but it gives you the context of what I'm trying to show you here that it's showing a rear view image of Cinderella. If I play around with the prompt, maybe remove the word short or add the word angle, I can get to my desired result. The next one is the full body shot. And here it does a pretty decent job, except the fact that it's adding the camera in the image, except the first one it also looks like the photo is inside a camera and the fourth one, it added up old, century old camera which is this big so not exactly what we were looking for but it was able to interpret that we were looking for Cinderella from a full body shot from the front view the next one is the close-up and in the close-up this image is exactly what we were looking for since we said extreme close-up it created an image of Cinderella which is extremely zoomed in now this is a okay so now I updated my prompt to low angle photo of Cinderella and now it's showing me what I was looking for this is a low angle photo of Cinderella which is exactly what I was looking for in this case now I can further manipulate these prompts play along with it I can just type Cinderella full body for instance and it will do the job of what I was looking for because it confused the camera shot and started thinking that I'm act I actually want the camera in the image itself, which is not the case. But nonetheless, you can see that how camera angle can play a significant role in understanding how the image should be created for the mid journey algorithm. So once again, I would highly advise you to look at these examples that I've provided, use them to come up with different camera angle shots of different things and see how that works out on different types of prompts that you use is camera short the best word for you to use or view is the best word so these kind of things you will only 
learn by experimenting so see now if i did only cinderella full body it worked now i only see a cinderella in a full body shot so i can just type cinderella low angle and that would do the job for me for low angle in this module we will further look into the power of text prompts by adding an artist's name in our input prompt to further influence the image in the style of that specific artist. An artist's name can be used as a prompt for an AI image generator tool like Midjourney by providing the name of a specific artist as an input to the algorithm. Midjourney will then use the style and techniques of that particular artist to generate the image. This can be very useful for you when you want to experiment with different style and techniques that already exist out there without having to learn them all by yourself. To give you a few examples, I have listed down some of the most famous artists here. You can find a huge list of different artists and their paintings in the comprehensive guide that I have attached at the end of this course in the optional section as well. But let's go through a few of them and see how our basic image gets influenced by the name of the artist when it is entered. So for instance, if I use Van Gogh's name, Van Gogh used very thick brushes, bold colors, and use of light, shadow, and distinct style. So if I want to create an image that looks like these attributes and has a Van Gogh style to it, I can add Van Gogh's name into the input prompt and the image will then be customized to focus on the specific style of Van Gogh for creating the image. Now let's go out there and try a few in Discord. So the first thing I'll do is I'll start with a basic prompt such as running horse sunrise. And then I will just start adding artist names before the running horse sunrise. So let's say I say Van Gogh style painting of running horse and sunrise and then i'll just change the name and to explore a few and understand how the outcome will change based on the artist name i'm going to run a name of the few of the most famous artists so let's do van gogh Monet, banksy who's a uk based artist pretty popular recent artist creates very street sort of an art the next we do picasso picasso uses fragmented pieces of paints and brush strokes to create a very different style of painting versus the others and then lastly let's go with da vinci so this should give me a feeling of something along the lines of um, mona lisa so our images have loaded now and let's start viewing them one by one so the first one we did was running horse sunrise. So this is a basic image which we created as a benchmark in each one of them. You see a very realistic version of a horse which is running with sunrise in the background. Exactly what we expected. Now let's go and check out Van Gogh's painting. So this is the Van Gogh version of the same painting. And as you can see, we can see the thick brush, brush strokes, bold colors and the overall image of a very Van Gogh style painting. Like it looks very similar to the brush strokes that he uses in Starry Nights, for instance. The next one we see is Banksy here. And Banksy, as you know, or you might know, Banksy is famous for his graffiti art. He uses stencils of street art in his work, which allows him to quickly create multi-layered images with clean lines and if you have saw the painting that was recently auctioned in UK by Banksy that was shredded right after the painting was sold, this image gives a very close resemblance to that specific image of Banksy. So AI art in this in case mid journey was able to understand what is required and create a Banksy sort of an aura around the image of the running horse with sunrise, exactly what we expected from the algorithm. The next one we see is Picasso and as we know that Picasso is fam uh, famous for using pigments of color and fragmented p 
pieces of colors in his painting and that is very clearly visible here you see the whore how he how he divides it into small subsections of fragmented colors all along creating collage sort of a way exactly like in the style of banks uh, sorry picasso's paintings the next one we see is da vinci and if you see the color palette and the composition of these paintings is very similar to that of mona lisa especially this one so in this way the algo was able to interpret that we are referring to da vinci style of painting and was able to apply it onto the generated output and as da vinci's painting looks sort of real and have a realistic touch to it you can see that reflected in the horse too where it looks like a real realistic horse versus the other paintings that we saw so far images that we saw so far had more of a unrealistic touch to it based on the artist name we chose and the last one we have here is monet and to give you an idea monet is known for using light colors in his painting so you see how that created a significant difference in the output image in these three images you see how he's using a more lighter color tone and composition to create the artistic flair of his paintings another way we can play around with the um, algorithm is that we can give the algo the exact painting too so let's say same prompt i'm going to just copy paste it and then i can refer to a specific painting so let's say in starry night style so starry nights is one of the most famous paintings of van gogh that got pretty you you would have probably seen it if you don't know about it um, another thing i want to share with you is that you can actually recreate the painting too with an ai version of it so i can just type starry nights painting or i can type mona lisa painting and see how the algo performs now so the images are ready so this is the first one where we said starry nights so starry nights you might be able to recognize this from the painting very close to this one so you see how the algorithm created its own version of the starry nights painting um, of van gogh which is another great way to get more inspirations you can highlight starry nights or any other painting for that matter to influence your art and that's what we did here where we said running horse sunrise and instead of giving an artist name i gave it a painting name which is the starry nights and you see how that had a huge influence on the image and now you see these broad brush strokes of van gogh style and these revolving lights which is a van gogh style of painting the next one more thing we tried was we just typed in mona lisa painting and you see how the algorithm created different versions of the mona lisa painting this one seems very realistic and very close to the actual painting versus these are slight modifications on the painting so uh, according along the same lines i can tell the algo to create me a painting of a running horse sunrise in mona lisa style now now our final image is also loaded and as you can see the image was recreated with the same prompt but this time since we added mona lisa in the painting it's showing me slight variations of da vinci's painting style although mona lisa is not very apparent but it did add the rough patch on the background accordingly and made the horse very realistic which is a very uh, da vinci style of painting and as mona lisa is a very realistic face that's what it's trying to do with the bot too now one more thing i want to quickly touch base in this lecture is the mid journey prompt guide that you will find in the optional section once you complete the course you can download this and this can serve as a guide for you in understanding different concepts that we have covered so far and plus it will give you a brief idea or a list of different prompts and based on different subtopics that we have covered so you can use these for your own work and uh, to get inspiration and to get an idea of what are the possibilities to explore with ai art to give you a quick idea so here we talk about a 
few crucial things that are important before you start with text prompting and then we dwell deeper into each subtopic for instance lighting and it gives you an idea of what are the different light options that you can use of course this is just a small list and there are so many other things you can try but it gives you an idea of okay if i'm looking for something then i can use one of these words keywords in my prompt to get that output similarly for artists i provided a list of some of the most famous artists in the world and how what their paintings create so for instance if you're trying to create a comic book art you can use jack kirby's name and it will create marvel's most iconic character sort of an image so in this way if you want to do abstract paintings with geometric shapes and primary colors this could be useful for lot papers you use piet mondrian's name i hope i'm pronouncing it right <laughs> uh, so and then there are a lot of other things like colors styles camera options so a lot of different things are covered i would highly recommend you check out the guide go through it and use some of these names such as the artist names i've provided to see how the image is being influenced by the use of different artist name check out their paintings and see is the algo doing a good job in getting the results that you expect and customize your results accordingly in this module we will continue exploring different ways we can customize and improve our text prompts and in this one we are going to expand on and further look into how different color schemes could be used to influence the output image in context of using color options as a prompt for an ai art generator like mid journey the color refers to the specific hues or shades that can be used to generate an image color plays a significant role in the visual arts and it is often used to evoke specific emotions and convey meaning in an image by using different color options as a prompt for mid journey we can experiment with different color schemes and explore how different colors can affect the overall mood and meaning of the generated image furthermore the choice of colors can also affect the perceived mood of the image that we have created for example bright and bold colors can create a feeling of energy and excitement while on the other hand subdued colors can create a feeling of calm and tranquility hence by using different color options as a prompt we as artist can experiment with different moods and create different emotions in our images now as you know there is an extensive never ending list of colors that we can make to experiment with i have come up with a short list of some of the best ones that i feel the mid journey algorithm understands really well and are useful in terms of creating different sort of images now let's go to the discord and figure out how these colors impact the same text prompt so now what i have done to save us time is i've ran the same command of a lighthouse by the lake in different color schemes and now i want to go through each one of the generated outputs and show you how the image was influenced just by the use of color so if we start with the first one this is a very simple basic image of a lighthouse by the lake so you can see a lighthouse you can see the lake um, you see the shadow of the lighthouse in the water you see different sort of lighting in different images u1 and u4 shows a daytime whereas u2 and u3 are more of a sunset or a slightly evening time shown in these images the first prompt that i tried was i added the word neon next to it and as you see the neon has a huge influences on on the image and you can see the neon lights have taken over the entire image and drastically changed the output aesthetic and composition of the image that was created the next one i tried was amber and amber more or less refers to 
a warm sort of an image with more of yellow and red and orangish shade into it and that's very visible in most of these photos that were created. The next one that I tried was CYMK which essentially refers to cyan, magenta, yellow and key stands for black. These are the three most, four most common colors used for printed materials. So it will create an image that you would see mostly on a printed sort of a brochure or a text. The next one I tried was gold color. And as you can see, it created a goldish shade in all of the images. In U3, it went one step ahead and showed that image on the wall which had a goldish furniture in the room as well the next one was pastel colors and pastel colors refer to any color that has just enough white mixed into it to look pale and soft while maintaining its colorful personality the most common pasteful colors we have seen are soft millennial pink light creamy pink and whimsy yellow and as you see this is what we see in the image it's using a shade of green and blue and pink and sometimes a blend of red to create this amazing image which was generated by using the word pastel color the next one is turquoise and as you can see in all the images it added a bluish green shade which formally resembles the turquoise color and then the next one i tried was sakura color which is the theme of japanese anime artist and which is highly revolves around shades of pink so you see how it created a cartoonish image with shades of pink in it because of one word that i added of sakura theme the next one I wanted to show was a simple basic color. I added light blue and if you add moonlight, it would show more or less the same thing, but add a moon to the image as well. Um, it looks slightly more of a cartoonish image. If you want to turn it into more of a realistic image, you can add another keyword for realism or photorealistic or something along the lines that we have discovered before, such as a DSLR camera view and then the same light blue shade can be captured in more of a realistic image as well. So guys, there's a long list of colors that you can implement. Go out there, practice a few more, see how the color palette influences the image in different cases. What if you color a tiger versus a human versus a building versus a road and see how that changes the composition and the aesthetics of the output image that you're creating by using Midjourney. The next topic we're going to cover in this chapter is medium. In context of an image, the term medium refers to the material or format used to create or display an image. This can vary widely from a traditional art media, such as a canvas, paper, and paint, or it could be a digital media that we see nowadays in the form of computer screens, printers, or merely just digital files. The medium that is selected to create an image in mid-journey can have a significant impact on the look and feel of the image, as different materials and formats can give an essence of different textures, colors, and effects. Now, similar to previous modules, you see in front of you a list of different mediums that you can use to experiment with and create your own AI art. To tell you a bit about some of the most popular ones, the first one is watercolor, which uses watercolor paints to create an image typically used on paper or canvas. The block print is use of carf block to create a repeat print of an object. This comes in handy when we're creating 
tiles for wallpapers or for different purposes where we're looking for repeated patterns. Graffiti is the use of rebellious spray paint or other spraying techniques to create images on the wall or other surfaces. Now another exciting one among these is collage. The use of various materials such as paper and fabric to create a layered image in which different pieces of different depth and texture are added together to create a final image. Now most of these comes to our mind from some of our school projects that we have done as a kid and in the context of mid journey we can use these features to define a base medium of the image we are trying to create and give it a very customizable new look to the art that we're trying to generate so let's go ahead to our discord and explore a few of them the first one i'm going to try is first let's define a base image this time let's go with an object okay let's do a musical instrument like a guitar then i'm going to write a couple of commands in which i'm going to assign different mediums to this guitar's image to see how it impacts the image of the guitar so let's say i go with watercolor guitar i believe this much should do the job let's do imagine collage painting of a guitar <coughs> then we can also try graffiti graffiti guitar painting we can also try what else do we have here let's go with oil painting and see how oil painting impacts oil painting of a very simple and basic prompts but they allow us to create varied variety of images of the same guitar so our images has loaded up and let's start reviewing them one by one so this is the first image of a guitar. Since we didn't provide any specific instructions to the algo with a very vague prompt of just a guitar, it created a couple of different versions of the guitar as expected. So in the second one, I wrote collage painting of a guitar. So you see how it created a collage in which different pieces and fragments are being used to create the overall image of the guitar and you see it's slightly broken at places or different colors and combinations shown in there a very much collage like photo the next one we did was graffiti and now you see it automatically took the guitar put it next to a wall and threw in a bunch of spray colors to give it a graffiti sort of an aesthetic feel to the artwork the next one we did was oil painting and now you can clearly visibly see that this was painted by oil um, it added a background effect by putting it on a surface where the oil is spilling out of the guitar showing that this was a freshly painted guitar but overall as expected we can see the impact of oil colors being displayed on the guitar and the last one was watercolor and this is what i like the most of all of these although in u1 it added a tree at the back not expected but overall in the other three images you see a good combination of colors specifically watercolors being splashed onto the image of the guitar actually in u3 it added a few paints too on the side now if i want to play around with this more this is one of the images that i will later use in the course when we are looking to sell products on etsy so to get you to tell you a bit more about it i would just do a full body or close-up image of a guitar and then i will see a much more zoomed in photo than what it is here and then if i upscale it using the default upscaler or the max upscaler i will end up with a high resolution image of a guitar which i can use to sell as a digital art on etsy the next thing i want to touch quickly is composition and composition basically 
in terms of visual art refers to the arrangement of visual elements in a way that creates a cohesive and aesthetically pleasing whole look. Now, as you might have thought about it, composition and medium are two different aspects of visual art which are very closely linked and it's all about how we define them here. What I'm trying to do here is give you a few more variables to work around with in terms of the actual image structure that you want to define. For instance, for the same image, I can create a portrait or a sketch or a painting or a sculpture. Now, the exact image and the medium used for the image could be the same. For example, I can use all of these five options on a collage or I can use all of these five options on a different sort of a medium like watercolor. But the output image would be very different in all five cases because of the composition or the overall structure and framework we're defining here. So it is very important to note the different ways I'm using composition versus medium in the context of our mid-journey image creation. And if you take this further to make you understand, we can take an example and further dive down into how these two are separate. If we take the subject matter of a portrait of a young woman, for instance, the composition of the artwork would refer to how the various elements such as lines, shapes, colors, textures are arranged within the artwork to create a pleasing and balanced look. On the other hand, the medium of the same artwork would refer to the specific materials such as watercolors or oil painting used to create the artwork itself. Now let's explore a few different ways that we have defined composition and what role it plays in our image creation process. So let's start with a basic prompt like in every case we have done before. Let's say lady in the garden. And then I'm just going to add a few details here. Portrait of a lady in the garden. Sketch of a lady in the garden. And sculpture of a lady in the garden. The images have been processed and let's start viewing them one by one. The first one we did was a lady in the garden. Now because I used the word lady specifically and not a woman, it created a sort of a few decades back concept of the lady in the garden in traditional dress overseeing or picking flowers and that's what we expect based on the prompt that we have provided. Now let's see how it was impacted by different variations of composition that we provided to the bot. So in the first one I did portrait of the lady in the garden. So in this way you see especially in U1 it created a portrait in which the lady is right is looking directly towards us as if she's posing for a portrait or it's an image portrait of the lady's painting in a standstill position stance. The next one we did was the sketch and as we expected it's a black and white image of the lady although the resolution and the face structure has not been created the way I would expect it to. If I change this to more of a close-up shot, I would believe I will get a much better result in that case. But overall, you get the idea that how a sketch is different from a portrait or just a prompt without any specifications on the composition of the image. And the last one will the sculpture. And in this one, this one gives us the most relevant image. And as you see in all four photos, there are different variations of a sculpture of a lady which is in the garden. So in this sense, the algorithm took it in a literal sense that it put the sculpture in the garden by itself. Now there are ways to remove different things from the photo. So for instance, if what if I just want to see the statue and not the garden, 
I could use one of the parameters or assign negative weights to it so that there is no green or grass in the photo and just the sculpture. That is something we're going to cover in the next chapter on advanced prompts. The next thing that I want to cover is emotions. Now, although we have touched it a bit in the beginning, if you remember, we tried an angry dog versus a cute dog versus a Disney dog. I just wanted to focus on this again because emotions play a huge role in determining the perspective that the image creates in the eyes of the viewer. In the context of an image, emotions refer to the portrayal of emotions through the use of visual elements such as color, composition, and most, most importantly, facial expressions. The emotions conveyed in an image can evoke a particular mood or a feeling in the mind and the perspective of the viewer, which is a very powerful tool in our hands. And therefore, it is important to keep this in mind as we make our own images, because every image will evoke an emotion in our viewer's eyes. And we need to make use of that and make sure that we're conveying the right emotion. Now to begin with, just to give you an idea, I have given a small list of emotions. You can of course find so many adjectives that can define the emotion in a moment. And for every image and every style, they would change. But because they play a very powerful role in the overall image creation, I wanted to specifically focus on that. And based on this, I created a couple of images using Tiger as a base image that I want to walk you through and help you understand how emotions work. Actually, sorry, not using the Tiger, but using Snow White. First, just to play around, I created a playful cat. So I attached playful next to the cat and you see how cute playful image of a cat with the ball the AI created. Then I wanted to get a bit more customizable using humans so I went to Snow White and the first one I gave it was a dramatic Snow White and you see how it creates a very dramatic image of Snow White in all four images I can tell just by looking at the image that she's being dramatic the next one I did was playful Snow White and now you see as we all know that Snow White and the apple is a famous story so the, it's using the apple to depict different sort of emotions in some of them she's smiling here she's playing around with the apples more sort of a juggling sort of a way conveying a playful image of the snow white the next one i did was romantic snow white and here you can see that the algo tried creating a very pretty cute gorgeous looking image of snow white which can instill a feeling of romance in our eyes as the viewer. And lastly, I created a pessimistic image of Snow White. So here I was looking for sadness, grief, and a low energy vibe or a negative vibe from the image. And it has been created in different ways. And it is specifically evident from the facial expressions of the Snow White herself that this is a pessimistic look in different ways. The next thing I want to touch a little bit base on is defining the background of the image that we're trying to create. If you look at the Mid Journeys library, it refers to as the environmental exploration or simply we can call it the location. So think of yourself as an art director or any director in that matter, even in films or theater, you see it's the director's job to define the setting of the scene in which the shooting will take place. Now, in the exact same way, we can establish a background image or define the context in which the image has been shot or taken or in our case created. Now, very basic thing but you can use a lot of different aspects of background to create and allow the user to perceive the image in the way you want the viewer to accept it 
now i've given you some very basic examples just so that you can play around with it of course you can go out there google it use tools like chat gpt we will further explore chat gpt as well and how powerful of a tool it can be when it comes to generating ideas for our ai model for mid journey but for now i've given you a list of 10 so go out there and experience with it in the meantime let's move forward to our discord and see how the background image creates a complete different context on the same object when it is added so in this case i started with a very basic image of one word tiger and as you can see it created an ultra realistic image of a tiger in all four grades amazing creativity and artistry from the model the next one i wanted to be created so i said tiger in the sea now the image is still very realistic because tigers can swim and in all different things you can see that the tiger is in the water trying to swim out or trying to swim in the water with different expressions if i want the viewer to perceive a specific emotion from the tiger i can also define that i can make it a joyful one or an angry one but here we are focusing on the background image here i did a very generic one where i made the tiger in the forest so you see the background is completely changed to leaves and trees defining that the tiger is in a tropical rainforest sort of a environment a natural habitat for tigers the next one i got creative and i said abandoned city so now you see the image completely changed it looks like a lonely tiger in an abandoned city where there is no one else the next thing i did was that i wanted to further play around and i just randomly came up with this where i said okay i want to see a cute baby version of the tiger and see how the algo interprets that and it did a pretty good job in creating the tiger and then my next idea was that this is a good image to go into a kid's room or a baby's room as a portrait or a landscape canvas now but what i didn't like about this image was the leaves and the background of it so i was like okay can i just see the tiger without anything else so then i tried again this time i tried only cute baby tiger and i what wanted to see was that i just want to see the tiger don't show me anything in the background so it is important as we are discovering backgrounds and how the location makes a huge difference having no background is also an option that we can explore right so that's what i was trying to get to then i finally got the idea i was like okay how about i just type on white background so here i just typed playful cute baby tiger on white background i added playful because i wanted to add more emotions into the image and it kind of did that in u1 where it made the tiger open its mouth to make it a little bit more playful but overall my job of defining a background was done here where it entered a white background now i have a lot of different ways i can further modify this i can assign anything onto the white background since the algo understands now that okay i have to create the image of a joyful baby cute tiger that's one part and then on a white background is the second part i could change the white background to a playful or watercolor background it would splash the watercolors on the background white wall while keeping the tiger alive in the front of us so in this way just by experimenting and playing around with the prompts you can achieve a lot more customization from the algorithm and it will give you the flexibility and the power to imagine an image and then try and recreate it using the mid journey by using just text prompts in this last module of this section i wanted to summarize and give you a basic idea of what we have learned so far and how to use it most effectively in creating your own ai generated art as you might have figured out by now the art of generating images using mid journey can be both exciting and unpredictable at the same time one key element to keep in mind 
is that anything left unsaid will be randomized by the algorithm and you may not get the specific details that you are specifically looking for. However, there is a flip side to it as well. Being vague can be a great way to get variety in our generated images. To increase the chances of getting the desired outcome, it is important to be as clear as possible about the subject, medium, environment, lighting, color, mood, and composition of the image. The subject can be a person, an animal, a character, location, object, or anything else that comes to your mind. The medium can range from a photo to a painting, illustration, sculpture, doodle, or any other medium that you can think of to create your desired image upon. The environment in which the photo is taken is also a key factor to consider. Images can be generated to reflect different environments such as indoors or outdoors or in outer space or fictional locations like Narnia or the Emerald City or even underwater. Furthermore, Lightning is another important aspect that can be customized to suit the desired mood including soft, ambient, overcast, neon or studio lights just to name a few. The next thing we discovered was color which is a crucial factor in generating images and there are several options to choose from including vibrant, muted, bright, monochromatic, black and white, or just pale pastel colors. Then we talked about mood and emotions and how they play a role in impacting the overall image and how it is perceived by the viewer. Finally, the composition of the image is an important element to consider as well, which can be a portrait, a headshot, a close-up view, a bird's eye view, or any other composition that you can think of. In conclusion, generating images using AI requires a balance between being specific while at the same time allowing for a factor of randomness to the algorithm so that it can explore and get more creative with the desired image that we want to create. By being clear about the subject, medium, environment, lighting, color, mood, emotions, composition, and location, you can increase the chances of getting the desired outcome while still enjoying the creative process of creating the images. With that, in the next module, we'll begin with a new chapter and start talking about different parameters and how we can play around with them to further customize our images.